Welcome to the basic module of Advanced and Wireless Communications. This course is part of the Colibri project and we are now coming to the wireless network part two. My name is Andreas Temgiel, I'm with Hamburg University of Technology. We, we talked already on the, um, on the physical layer to some extent in the previous uh, part of the module and I want to show you now how um, the data rate and the physical layer evolved over the time. We introduced um, that in 1997 we had the first version, the legacy 802.11, which were doing something one or two megabit with um, BPSK and QPSK, differential versions of this, and the direct sequence spread spectrum technology. And we saw in 1999, um, we saw the 802.11a standard, which were moving to the five gigahertz ISM band, giving us more bandwidth, also a more, um, more difficult radio propagation environment, and here, we for the first time, we're using the OFDM technology. We had discussed that in the beginning and the um, basics of the course. It's the orthogonal frequency division multiplayer access. And we are using orthogonal frequencies to transmit with um, high data rate and different frequencies simultaneously. With this, we can reach up to 54 megabit per second. By the way, this was taken from the European approach, the Hyperlan, and this was um, converted or translated to the i in the same year, the same radio interface was um, also, oh sorry, uh, not the same. In the same year, also an improvement of 802.11b was introduced, going up to 11 megabit. This is backward compatible to the legacy standard on the same frequency um, band on 2.4 gigahertz. And it was using a complex complementary code keying um, scheme, which was um, made for 5.5 and 11 megabit per second data rates. A um, couple of years later, 2003, that was what I, I also introduced, um, this um, 811A interface, OFDM, was transferred from 5 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz, and we could also reach 54 megabit per second using the lower frequency band 2.4 gigahertz. And then the next evolution was a couple of years later, 2009, finally they standardized on um, the 811N. There were some previous devices on the market, which was pre-N, uh, because there were some problems um, on how to agree on to agree on how to reach the 600 megabit per second, and it is using multi antennas to better exploit the radio channel. It is using 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band, but it also allows to combine two channels to have 40 uh, megahertz channels instead of 20 megahertz channels. And this was the dispute which was going on to make this reality that late. Now, just two years ago, um, 802.11ac was introduced, offering data rates up to 103 gigabit per second. This is using 256 QAM and 80 megahertz channels in the 5 gigahertz band. Let's have a look back to the, um, to the first schemes. Looking back to 2.4 gigahertz, we have 13 or 11 channels standardized, so depending on the region you are in. And they are 22 megahertz wide, and they have 5 megahertz inter-channel spacing. They should make us curious because what do we mean with um, 22 megahertz wide and 5 megahertz interchannel spacing? Basically, meaning every 5 megahertz you go for the next channel, but it's 22 megahertz wide. And that's exactly the problem we see in this graph here. We see that um, this is always the center frequency, they are just 5 megahertz apart, but the channel bandwidth is 22 megahertz. So these channels are non overlapping, they overlap. And that also means, and that is something you can realize or you can um, utilize if you notice, know if you do your home network, you should not use overlapping channels because they interfere with each other, and you should use non-overlapping channels. And they are only 1, 6, and 11, or 1, 7, and 13 are non-overlapping, or the others will interfere with each other. In the 5 gigahertz band, we have more frequencies available. We have non-overlapping channels um, in different bands. US and Euro European Union have different bands, but we have, for example, in Europe, 12 channels between 5 and 5.3 gigahertz. It also has a dynamic frequency selection, so you can listen to the channel and dynamically select the best frequency, but it also requires a power control, not to interfere others. If you look for the medium access, the question how do we do the medium access, um, we have to think about uh, how would you do it. Do we want to coordinate, assign frequencies, or assign different um, time slots? The solution taken here is to uh, take a rather simple scheme, uh, a random access scheme called Carrier Sense Multiply Access Collision Avoidance, C 
carrier sense, we know by now, I guess, I hope, you remember, being polite, listen to the channel before you talk, and collision avoidance is something we have to find a scheme to avoid a collision, because, because a collision you will only detect by not receiving the acknowledgement. So, that's already I mentioned, um, carrier sense means we should be polite, and collision avoidance, we realize this by um, do not immediately transmit when the channel is free again. So you listen to the channel, channel is, is busy. If you now transmit immediately, there's a high risk that someone else was also listening and you both transmit at the same time, you will have a collision. So once you've seen the carrier busy, you wait some time before you transmit. That's the collision avoidance. And then we have to think about how do we differentiate between acknowledgements and, sign and control signals. They should wait less time and then others will see that the carrier is busy again. Let's see how this works. I have an example here. We have access point, we have three different stations. This red arrow show when a packet is coming from the higher layers to be transmitted to the uh, medium access control, or the data link layer. So station one is the first station which receives a packet from the higher layers and should transmit. And it waits some time um, to check if the channel is free or to check if someone has a higher priority and then transmits the data because there was nothing before when the, the data was received. While A is transmitting, station the access point and station B receive a packet, as what we see, this red ones here, and they want to transmit. They sense the carrier as busy, they will take a random number, uh, but first they wait until the packet is transmitted. Then they want to trans, then they wait a, um, a certain frame spacing, this um, DIFS, and um, then they would count on their, their, um, their back off. What we see here is uh, because the packet was transmitted to the access point, it has to acknowledge. And the acknowledgement is done with the shortest in the frame spacing. So even if another station had a back off of zero, it could not transmit because the shortest in the frame spacing is shorter than the um, DIFS, which is distributed coordination function in the frame spacing. So now we, we see that um, after the acknowledgement is done. The um, A and the access point would count on the DIFS because they have just standard data to transmit, and then they start counting off their random time they have to wait. And that's what we see here. And station B is the one which has the shorter time taken. And after it has counted down, it would check the carrier again. If it's idle, it can transmit its data. And then after cross inner frame spacing, the access point would acknowledge then only the access point has data to transmit in our system, our example here. And the access point then again waits the uh, DIFS, waits the rest of the back off time, and then transmits the data, which is then acknowledged by station um, C. The data has to go to station C in this case. After the example of the um, carrier sense multiple access, and, um, I want to show you how the standard is completely done. I want to show that on the, um, with the flowchart, uh, which you see here. So we begin on the top left here. We initialize the system with giving a parameter k, I will introduce later, with 4, and we wait for a packet to be transmitted. And this packet should come from the higher layer, I'm at a transmitter. Once I receive a packet from the higher layer, which I should transmit, I do a carrier sense, as I described. If the carrier is idle, um, I can immediately wait for the DIFS, do a carrier sense again. If it's still idle, I transmit the packet. If at the beginning the carrier sense told me that someone else is, is communicating, I basically have a carrier detected, a CD here, then I select a random number, a random back off, which is taken out of zero and the minimum of um, two to the power of k minus one um, and 10, 23. This gives you a random number, which is um, depending on the parameter of k, but it's, um, the maximum value you can have is something like 10, 23, 1023 slots. We have small slots which we define, which we also can, can count on. And this k will give us some um, opportunity to scale. Um, this is the number of collisions we have seen, so we increase later with the number of collisions. The more collisions we have seen, the more users seems to be in the system, the more I should have a spread or have, um, the more I should wait to give um, a lower probability of collision. So now I have my random number, and if it, I take a zero, then everything's fine. I just go down, wait for the DIFS again, do a carrier sense, 
packet as I carry as idle, I transmit the packet. If I take a larger number, I go to a countdown, and every time slot I count down. Um, if I have a zero, I go again to transmit. If I don't have a zero, I do carry sense again. If the carry is idle, I will go and count down further. If the carry is not idle, I interrupt my counting down, and I wait until the carry is idle again, and then I will take the old value and count down further. If I have transmitted the packet, I will, receive an I will wait for an acknowledgement. I wait the shortest the frame spacing for the acknowledgement. If I don't receive the acknowledgement, there seems to be the packet is lost or collided. I assume it's collided. Then I would um, increase the counter for the number of collisions and attack a random number, which has a probability to be larger than before. Because I would take it from the interval. It's a uniform dispute random number I take. And the interval is now between 0 and the minimum of 2 to the power of k, and k is one, one number higher. We have another problem um, which we might which might lead to some problems. We call it the hidden node problem. And it's um, illustrated here. We have three nodes which want to communicate. And um, if node A wants to transmit to node B and node C wants to transmit to node B at the same time, node A will not see what node B that node B is transmitting. Um, you might have a collision. Let's do it um, a bit more um, detailed. So node A wants to transmit something to node B. It senses the carrier. Everything is fine. It's idle. It starts transmitting. Node C, sometime later, while node A is still transmitting, receives the packet to transmit. It senses the carrier. It can't see the transmission from node, B, node A. So it also senses the carrier is idle, transmits as well. You have a collision. And this is a problem, which is one of the typical problems we have in communications and wireless communications. Um, what to do against that? And that's what we, um, you could do. You could send a request. Yeah? If you send a request to send, and the other one's answering with a clear to send, then you can avoid this. That's what we do. We use RTS and clear, uh, um, CTS, the clear to send. So the node A would send a request to send to node B, indicating the length of the transmission. And then node B, the center node in our example, answers with a clear to send, indicating the residual time of the transmission. And node C, you remember, has, um, can receive from node B, from the center node, receives this clear to send, and also knows that B is receiving from someone else, and also knows how long it will do that, and can, um, will not transmit during that time. Oops, sorry. Um, this was already the, um, the wireless communication part. I um, gave an overview on the 811 architecture. We introduced the physical layer, and we also introduced the MAC layer, to the medium access layer of 811. And now that's quest time for um, you to work again. And these are our references. And I thank you very much for your attention. I hope we can keep you um, joining the next type, part of the course.